Hello, my name is Thomas Masano. Today is April 22nd, 2018, and this video is going to be a quick start guide for installing Hitachi Content Monitor and Hitachi Data Intelligence. This is, will be a single instance um, uh, Hitachi Data Intelligence. It is not HA, and we will not be addressing um, different versions of the OS or firewalls. This is just very basic. Quickly get it up and running. So we're going to be going over the configuration requirements, installing Fedora VM in ESX, installing, configuring Hitachi Content Intelligence, and then configuring the HCP so that it reports the proper statistics, <clears throat> and then configuring Hitachi Content Monitoring. So as part of the configuration requirements, I am focusing on, in this video, Fedora 25 server. Now there are others that are supported and you can look through the documentation to find it. Importantly is the Docker version 1.12.6. Um, we are installing Hitachi Content Intelligence 1.3 and we are using Hitachi Content Platform version 8. Now 8.1 is preferred and the reason I say this is that the HCPs um, provide a certain amount of reporting that Content Manager can thereby visualize for you. So it, you could run this against version 7, but the amount of information that HCP provides is limited. So this will be a single instance HCI VM. Re the recommendations are 24 cores, 64 gig of memory, and at least 2 terabytes of storage. On the HCP, we're going to need the domain name of the HCP system to monitor. We need MAPI enabled, SNMP enabled and syslog enabled and a user with the monitor privilege uh, username and password. Okay, so now that we have these things, let's jump into the video. Okay, so I'm going to create my VM now, logging into my VMware server and I'm going to create a VM and I'm going to call this uh, HCM. It's going to be uh, Linux and Red Hat Fedora 64. Click Next. I'm going to pick Data Store 3 because I need two terabytes at least. So I have two terabytes free here. I'm going to click Next. Now the recommendation is to have 24 cores, but this is my lab and I only have four. So that's all we're gonna get. Memory again should be 64 gig. I only have 32, so that's what it's gonna get. And the hard disk I'm going to put in two terabytes. And we're going to make sure we have the correct network adapter. And then the host device, we're going to point it to the Fedora ISO. So I have downloaded the Fedora server um, version 25, 64-bit. So I click on that, select, click next, review everything. Looks good. And my two terabytes, finish. And down here we can see that it is starting to Create the VM. Okay, now that it's created it, let's connect to the uh, console for it. And let's power it on. Click inside of the screen and hit enter.
Okay, now we select our language. And we need to do a few things here. So I'm in the right time zone. America's New York. I'm using English, English keyboard. Uh, the install source is local. The selection is Fedora server. And I need to change my partitioning. I will configure this myself. Click done. Click automatically. Now I want to change my home. I don't need 1.93 terabytes for my home. Maybe I only want uh, 25 gig for that. And I want in my root, I want as much as I can get in there. So I'll put a crazy number in here, like three terabytes, so that I'm sure it grabs everything that's available to it. So you can see it grabbed 1.96, and that looks good to me. And click done. I accept. Also now I'll change my networking because by default it's going to be um, DHCP. So I click on that, configure it. I'm going to go to the IP4 settings and change that to manual. Add my IP address. Correct mask. gateway. Now I have to put my DNS in here. Um, don't have to put a search domain, but I like to put it in there. And save. Let's see if we get everything in there right. 191. 24 mask. Correct route, correct DNS. Now I also want to change my host name down here. Apply that. And that all looks good to go. So I'm going to click done. And I believe I can begin the installation. While it's doing some of the things it needs to do, we need to put a password on root. And now we're just waiting for it to continue configuring the system. Okay, so it's completed, and now we can reboot. Okay, now that we've installed our operating system, we're going to install HCI, because that is the base for Hitachi Content Monitor. So we're going to connect to that server. And I believe Docker did not install in a default package. Oh, so uh, let's update this system. say yes to all of these.
Okay, now that it's done the update, let's uh, install Docker here. Okay, let's just double check our version. And we are at 1.12.6, that's good. We've done an update, so it's best to restart or reboot. Okay, and it's back. Okay, so we're assuming this server is behind a firewall, so we're going to disable the firewall in here. It just makes installation so much easier if your company requires that this firewall be on and uh, the ports that you need to open up are all documented, but I'm not going to cover it here. This is more of a quick start video. So we're going to do a system control. Okay, so it is enabled and it is running, so we need to stop it. <clears throat> and we need to disable it. And we need to mask it so it doesn't start up again after a reboot. And let's just check the status again. Okay, and that looks good. Okay, now we need to uh, create a group and a user for HCI. So we're going to do a group add. And it's going to be uh, ID 10001 and a user add. To group 10001. So now we're going to need to start Docker. So let's start that. Oops. Let's start it. Let's enable it. So it starts up after reboot. Check the status again. All right, active and running. We're good. So now we have to upload the binaries to the HCI. So we're going to put that in the OPT directory. So we're going to make a directory. change to it and now we're going to upload the binaries into this directory so this is the file that was downloaded from the community you can see down here in the lower left that it's uploading let's see if it's there Yep, there it is. So we're going to unzip that. And that created directory 1.3.0.93. So now we're going to run the install. So we're going to do uh, from the bin um, directory underneath that. So it's going to be 1.3.0.93. 93 slash bin slash install. Okay, so now that created some other directories here. So we have a bin directory, so we're going to run setup from that bin directory. So we're going to do bin. And then the dash i and ip address. Oh, yep, we have a, a setting that we have to set. So let's get that done now. OK, 
Okay, we, we changed the max map count to 262144, but we also have to put that in the uh, system control config file. And it's going to be the same thing we just typed on the line, command line. OK, let's try the setup again. There we go. There we go. Now it's running. Okay, looks like it installed. So now we have to uh, put the service file over in the system directory. So we're going to do a CP. And we're going to copy that over to etc systemd system. Okay, so now we also need to enable and start the service. And let's start it. And let's check it. It is enabled and it is running. Okay, so it looks like we are good to go. Um, the next step is now we're going to configure HCI and that in turn will install Atachi Content Monitor and then we'll configure that. Okay, now that we have HCI installed, we're going to configure HCI and we do that via web browser and it's a HTTPS connection. Um, on port 8000. So we can go there. So it's asking us the create a password. So we're going to create one. And we set it. Now it's asking, do we want to make it a true Hitachi content intelligence for search, or do we want to make it content monitor? And we would like it to make it content monitor. So we click continue. Now there's only one instance here. We only installed one, so there's nothing to discover here. Uh, there is no advanced configuration, and I believe we are ready to deploy. So we click here. It's, do you really, really want to do this? Yes, I do. And down at the bottom, you could say de you could see deployment is in progress, and we could scroll through the advertisement here. And this is what the monitor app will look like for you. Okay, so it looks like it deployed it. Now we're at the first time setup wizard. So we're going to click next. And if we had a license, we would drop it here, but otherwise we have a 90 day trial and we can use it for 90 days and have time to get our license. Everything will still work. We have um, configure our security. Session timeout will be 120 minutes. We need to give it a full um, host name. So I call mine HCM for Hitachi Content Monitor. HDSNJ.com is my domain and we can add a admin welcome message and a monitor welcome message. We click update and we say next. 
I have no packages to load, so I simply click Next. And now Setup is complete. We click Finish. So now it's starting to load the Monitor app. And you could see it bounced us over to another port up here, 6162. So this is the URL to connect to on the Hitachi Content Monitor. Okay, before we set up Hitachi Content Monitor, we need to make sure HCP is configured properly. So let's go to our HCP System Management Console, <clears throat> and we need to uh, maybe create a user for this for uh, Content Monitor to log in and gather some of the statistics. So we'll go to User, Create a User, and we can make that whatever you would like. So it could be HCM User. Um, let's see, call this content monitor user, give them a password. And we need to give him monitor privileges and create that user. And there he is. Okay. So now also we need to configure Mappy. So we're gonna to go to um, security again and Mappy. And we're going to make sure the management API is turned on and say update. And we're going to make sure node status is also set. So we're going to go to security again. Then we're gonna to go to network security and we're going to make sure that enable node status is on, and it is. Then we're going to go to monitoring and set up SNMP. So we're simply going to enable SNMP. Uh, we can keep version 1 or 2. If we use version 3, <clears throat> we have to create a username and password. So let's keep it simple. Use 1 or 2 and give it a community of public all lowercase and say notices and update okay now one last thing we need to do is also do syslog so we'll click syslog and we want to enable syslog we want to send um, compliance and security events and send log messages of notice or higher and we can also turn on data access requests and log messages for the API. And update settings. And dismiss. OK, so we need to add the HCP Content Monitor as a syslog server. So we need to put the IP address in. And that's typically on port. 9601 and add that okay so that should complete our setup for the HCP so now let's go back to content monitor and if you try to click on dashboards it'll tell you uh oh there's nothing here so we have to create a source to get started so let's give it a name and this is my ECP number two. We need to give a domain name for the system. So that is ECP2.hdsnj.com. And we want to gather node statistic metrics, mappy metrics, and then we have to use the username that we created, which was HCM user and the password and we have SNMP version 1 public string syslog and everything looks good let's click continue so it looks like everything came through it's giving you a little preview of some of the visualizations that it has Maybe you can scroll down take a look at some of those at your leisure. 
and then click continue. And now we can create. So it found four signals, 23 visualizations, and let's create. And there it is. So now we can click on Hitachi Content Monitor, and we should be able to see the dashboards. So these are still populating now, so we need to give it a little bit of time, but you'll the dashboards will work. There'll just be no information in them yet. So let's sit back, relax, and wait for the data to come in.